what you can imagine is always scarier than what you actually see. When I'm on my own in an unfamiliar place, I'm listening to see what there is around me. It's an instinctive thing that we all have. Your first line of defence when it comes to fight or fright is sound. What is the sound of fear? Is it a monster directly in front of you? Or is it your imagination gone wild? Survival horror makers Visceral Games have mastered the art of turning terror into audio with their hit franchise, Dead Space. We traveled here to Redwood City, California to talk to the audio team about manufacturing fright for their forthcoming Dead Space 3. Dead Space follows an engineer named Isaac Clarke as he battles human corpses infected by a parasite known as necromorphs. The classic vibe of Dead Space is you're walking through these corridors with not much going on, you know, from room to room, and you know at some stage that something, someone, is going to jump out. The sound of fear, to me, is all about building the tension before that moment happens. I believe that the Foley sounds, if they're right, you know, just the mundane sounds the characters make when they're moving around, it connects them with the world and it helps you to empathise with the world and believe the world. But I think this all goes back to creating a reality for the horror to exist in. Take anything that you have in media, whether it's a video game or a movie or television, turn off the sound. All the emotional content is removed from that scene. The audio is the component that will add to the immersion and that really lets players believe that they're in a place that, that allows them to get lost in what they're doing. Our sound designers for our games have to be aware that the player could be looking anywhere at any given time. That challenge means that if I'm going to put a bunch of stuff in the room, you know what, all this stuff better work and it all better have sound because that's really going to add to the experience. So our audio team's done a bunch of different things over the years to kind of capture and create the sounds that we use in Dead Space. As long as it comes out and it sounds believable and it sounds unique, then I don't really care where it comes from. A melon's a nice thing because it's got a kind of bony outer shell and a very squishy, watery inner. So if you hit it hard enough, you get the kind of crack of the shell and then you get the splurt of the liquid inside. And, and that probably has more of a sense of smashing a skull and, and mushing the brain inside than actually doing it for real. We do a lot of that. Snapping sticks of celery to get bone breaking sound. Ready when you are. Nice and hard. We wouldn't normally choose to record this kind of thing outside. The studio that we would normally record this is unavailable. It's been booked out by The Sims. On this game, for the Necromorph style in particular, we've done a lot of voice recording. I started with a pretty heavily manipulated sample of one of my coworkers screaming down in our recording room. <coughs> bit by bit, I will start adding in plugins and audio processes and other samples, animal noises, little growls. It's the little stuff, right? And then you get the entire composite terror sound of a necro screaming. There's been a few things I've heard out in the world that unintentionally have made it into the game. One of them was my little niece. She had this scream that was completely singular and I had to have it and it's in one of the creatures. pretty otherworldly. Fear is kind of tough in an interactive environment. One of the advantages that a horror movie has is you're controlling the timeline, whereas we have Isaac running around completely under the player's control. 
obviously a lot of our game is scripted, we know exactly what we're going to do, but for parts of the game which are interactive, we have the fear system. The fear system is important because it tells the audio what to do to make the player afraid. It controls the kind of physiological responses of Isaac, particularly you're aware of his breathing and his heartbeat. Up there in the top, we can see Isaac's fear value. He has only 0.1 fear of a possible one. That means Isaac's pretty relaxed. Now we've got some fear. The music's louder. Breathing is louder. Heart beats at full rate. I like to think that that fear system adds to the intensity of the combat. You know, with the staccato background, the necromorphs kind of, with their vocalizations chiming in, you're starting to create this symphony of destruction. And that, that fear music is degrading and getting quieter and quieter. And there's this exhalation, you're like, I did it. And it just feels like you've survived something that was significant. In the past, audio wasn't at the same fidelity level, it wasn't as complex, and it wasn't as capable. I think now people are starting to, to think of it as a, a real important component. Uh, I don't care if players don't notice what I'm doing. Uh, to be honest. I mean, you know, this sounds like a cliche, but really if players don't notice, then you're doing your job right.